Hey everybody, I'm Beth Davis and welcome to Teachable Tuesday where we discover God's heart and are changed by his word. Uh, this is the last message in our Do Nothing series and I don't know about you but I'm going to be praying with, meditating on, integrating John 15 and in particular John 15:5 probably for the rest of my life. Um, but in a special way today, I wanna invite Jesus into the conversation, bring Jesus himself into our reflection on John 15. Maybe you've noticed this is kind of a, a new trend since we started doing series, that at the end of each series, we have a shorter message and we end with a time of virtual Eucharistic adoration, which I am loving. But I realize many of you are listening to this podcast. You're not watching it on video. So if you notice some of the uh, later messages uh, are a little shorter, that's because we're trying to make room, make space for you to talk to Jesus about what we've been praying through and talking about. So we're gonna do that today. I cannot wait. This is how we're gonna wrap up all of our series moving forward. And to you listening, not watching, I wanna especially extend an invitation to you to uh, go to Eucharistic Adoration, whether that's at a Blessed Sacrament Chapel or doing virtual adoration uh, at home on your own. Okay, great. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we need you. We want you, Lord. We want more of you. We want to do more of this life with you. Bind us more and more to you, Jesus, to your sacred heart. Holy Spirit, we ask you to um, open our ears, illuminate our minds as we read and ponder the word. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A few months ago, I was out of town in a new city at a conference with other women and Christian leaders. And one night I ended up being seated next to a really humble and wonderful woman who loved Jesus. We had a beautiful conversation and we shared stories over dinner and throughout the next day, uh, we kept running into each other. Uh, we ended up sitting next to each other in the main session. We stood next to each other in line for the bathroom and kind of chatted all throughout and processed the weekend together. And when I got to the airport, 
a, a car <laughs> pulled up behind me and she got out. We were both being dropped off at the exact same time. So we checked in. Turns out I was delayed and her flight was a little bit later. We had some time to spare. We're chatting all, all the way through security. And when we got into the gate area, she invited me to join her in the Delta Sky Lounge. Now, <laughs> I had never been to a Delta Sky Lounge, so you better believe I took her up on that offer. And she led me through uh, this terminal. We found this little hidden elevator. This felt all very secret, very fancy. And uh, around this little nook, we took the elevator upstairs and as the doors opened, my eyes widened. Were we still at the airport? I mean, here are all these gold glistening surfaces. It was quiet. It's almost like it was noise proof. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Here are three smiling faces. There are fresh flowers and um, glasses of champagne on the, on the desk there. Here's a, a rolling screen with all the updated flight information. And yet none of the hustle and bustle, the stress of a terminal was perfectly quiet and warm. It was incredible. So I'm not playing it very cool right now, but I tried to play it cool. And as my new friend approached the counter, she announced that she had a guest with her. Me, right? I was the guest. And then she pulled out her card. Now we hadn't talked about this at all, but apparently there was a fee. So I, I reached for my wallet. I felt a little bit embarrassed. Like I'm already an outsider, you know, I gotta pay to get in this club. But she didn't even pay attention to me. She completely ignored me. She wasn't surprised by this. She wasn't perturbed. She pulled out a card and paid for me. It was so generous. Her generosity was easy and immediate. And then, and then we walked into the actual lounge. I mean, the promised land. <laughs> there were all these like cozy groupings of chairs and uh, tables with other travelers. And yet it wasn't nuts. It, 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 people were reading or sleeping or talking. It was very relaxing, clean and quiet. The bathrooms, I thought I was in a hotel, not an airport. And the food, you guys, I promise I'm wrapping this up, but I've just got to paint a picture here. The food, there's this whole buffet of fresh fruit and soups and main dishes. You people with Delta Sky Lounge access are just laughing at me, but this was all new to me. There were drinks, it was all free. It was all free. And all I had to do was follow my new friend into the lounge and I received all of her benefits. And friends, it's the same with Jesus. We follow him and he gives us everything we need. <laughs> Throughout this series, we've been talking about this default desire to do everything on our own. But John 15, 5, Jesus is telling us a, a different reality. He's telling us the truth of the matter. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. So Jesus, Jesus Christ is our source and our life. He says, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. When we're cut off from him, when we are willfully insisting on doing life ourselves, we wither and die. This spiritual reality, this withering and dying, trying to do our lives, to do everything apart from Jesus, I believe that's what's at the root of this pervasive, perpetual exhaustion we feel. Because in both big and little ways, although we believe in God and we love Jesus, we have not yet given him full access to every part of our lives, every part of our hearts, every part of our story. We have not yet been fully grafted to the vine. In many ways, we're still operating under the assumption that we don't need his help with parenting or paying the bills or that sticky situation with your roommate or that project at work, right? We'll, we'll let God into certain things, uh, overarching things, but, but maybe not 
the nitty gritty, the everyday, but the nitty gritty, the everyday, this is where it gets really good. It gets fun. The more specific we get with the Lord, uh, the more aware we become of his action in our lives. Not only uh, offering my work, okay, or my family, or my vocation, handing it off kind of carte blanche, but instead talking to him about everything. I mean it, everything. So how can you start to give him everything, to share everything with him and do nothing apart from him? Start with one thing. Start with one thing. Different, different than uh, last week, kind of paring down to our one thing, the one thing Jesus was inviting us into. But I want to use those same words of Jesus and apply them in a different context. Do you remember he spoke uh, to Martha? She was complaining in, in Luke chapter 10 that Mary was sitting at his feet, just soaking up every word. Mary, Martha needed help in the kitchen. But what did he say to Martha? Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. Before that, he says there is need of only one thing. So here again, we're applying that one thing principle, right? To starting with one thing, getting into the, the nitty gritty, uh, the one area, the one relationship, the one situation, one conversation uh, where you need Jesus's help. It could be very simple and ordinary. Get micro with the Lord, right? He's a details man. So often we're, we kind of bring him all of our stuff, like everything. Uh, but sometimes that 30,000 view, foot view, that gets overwhelming. We really do need to get down in the weeds. We need to get micro with the Lord. Tell him everything about that one thing the shape of it, the contours, who's involved, what happened, how you feel about it. I'm not saying start with, you know, your deepest wound or your greatest fear. I'm, I'm talking about that one difficult conversation with your spouse or a coworker. Just share your heart with him. Uh, be in his presence. And guess what? Then you're abiding with him. When you come into this time of prayer, I want to encourage you, we're not discerning anything. We're not insisting on an answer or trying to fix it or get it over with, whatever it is. In the words of John Henry Newman, this is heart speaking unto heart. I want you to allow your heart to, be, uh, to become grafted to him a little bit more today than yesterday, a little bit more today than before. And this is the mystery of abiding, sharing your heart and receiving his. And in return, he shares his heart and we receive him. This intimate exchange of love is what we call prayer. And the promise of Jesus in John 15 is that if we abide in him, if we stay with him, if we do nothing apart from him, but everything with him, we will bear much fruit much fruit and right now i want to give you uh an invitation i want to give you the space to share the nitty-gritty with him that one thing you might even be right now kind of swatting it away like that's not a big deal i don't really need to get into that but right here right now we're going to take this opportunity to come into jesus's presence and to sh tell him everything about that one thing let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen, Jesus. Jesus, send us your Holy Spirit. Even now, Lord, I, I pray that you would bring to the surface the one thing, God, that you want to hear about. Sift away anything else, other distractions, anything that we might be tempted to, to grasp or, or try to fight for control or answers about. But just that one thing, Lord, what do you want to hear from our hearts? You so delight to listen to our hearts, and we thank you, Lord. 
And Jesus, give us the grace to share our hearts with you, to show you our love by giving you our words, our time, our attention. We want to, to come now and, and do nothing with you, to just abide with you. And from here, Lord, to do nothing without you. Thank you, Jesus.